8,900 pounds on the nose. A uh, Cougar 29 RKS here at Haywood RV of Coldwater, Michigan. This is neat because it's, uh, I mean, as the model number designates, it's a rear kitchen, but it really has a big, expansive, full middle living room thanks to that big, deep slide right on the door side. It's kind of a goofy, different floor plan. I've seen a few other brands attempt to replicate this, but no one's really executed it and nailed it the way Cougar has here, which is why I don't think I really see it in a lot of other things in the marketplace. Now there's certainly uh, a bunch of other rear kitchen sort of uh, fifth wheels out there in this smaller class, but there's not going to be another one that has the big open middle living room area that this one has right here. So let's step inside and see what she has to offer. And when you get to your destination and all opened up, you see why this one's so darn popular. Because it gives you like the big open space here and the feel of dual opposing super slides, but without the heavy weight and cost of dual opposing super slides. Now, at first glance, you've got a very traditional super slide over here. You've got your dining table set up, and normally there would be a booth here. We have upgraded this specific one in this video to feature a freestanding table and chairs because it doesn't really need the benefit of the extra sleeping of the booth, and we'll see that in just a few minutes. And we've got the same big max size windows, all of which open for breeze like you find in all the Cougars right here. But instead of a hide-a-bed right here, we actually have a nice dual reclining wall-hugging theater seat. And it is on Boardwalk and Park Place directly across from this huge 4K Ultra HD TV right here. So this is a no-neck wrecker. You are not going to have to crank your neck around. We'll come back to sleeping in a minute. Before we get there, I want to point out all the lighting and all the nice little touches they've done up here in the slide of this Cougar. And it actually is all keyed into... A simple little motion sense switch over here, very similar to what you find in the Eagles. It's actually touch sensitive, but what's neat is if you hold it, it's also a dimmer switch. So when it's movie night, or if we have like grandkids who need a night light, this has a very uh, awesome multi-purpose sort of benefit to it. Now, um, they could have expanded the kitchen cabinetry a little bit overhead, but you would have lost that window. And I... I truly believe that extra little window right there, so that when you're in the kitchen, you still get a good look at the door side of your RV. I think that's one of the best parts about this floor plan. Uh, but the thing is, you're not really going to be hurting on kitchen storage space whatsoever. So you can see we have a cabinet above the microwave there, and this thing up top is extremely large. There is a big old wide open space here. Very handy for those large, not everyday use items. Now, very common to a rear kitchen setup, we've got that big uh, pantry beside the eight cubic foot refrigerator freezer over here. And then once again, we've got a large cabinet space right here, but it doesn't wrap all the way around under that countertop where you can't get to it. They utilize that space in different ways. Over here, under the stainless double sink, and there are two sink covers, by the way. I simply have one off so you can see what you're doing uh, below that high-rise faucet. A nice space for a wastebasket, which is something that's often missed on a lot of uh, rear kitchens. And we've got plenty of kitchen drawer space here. And really, this is going to be kind of mostly your utensil space, because right around the corner, once again, not wasting anything under the countertop, they open it up to give you easy access to maximum storage. And really, just to hop, skip, and jump away... It's very easy to look at the entertainment center, uh, you know, on the back side of the outside kitchen here as an extension of the kitchen storage. Now, looking up at the living room from the opposite angle, you know, you can see again that easy viewing entertainment center directly across from that theater recliner and all the big open expansive space that you have right here. And that's what's nice about this one. When you want that extra room to, to kick up your feet without cutting the camper off, that's where this one comes into play. And really... Um, kind of on that same note, you can notice that when the sleeper sofa opens up, because it's rear facing, it doesn't cut the camper off. You can still navigate around easy. So if the guests or grandkids are still there and you want to get back to the coffee pot in the morning, you can do that. And you may also notice how that, uh, the, the rear theater seat can still open up and fully recline even when the sofa is open. So that does give us guests sleeping back here for three. I hear all the time from grandparents, they go, I don't even care if the sofa opens up because my grandkids always end up sleeping in my recliner. So as long as it can open up and lay back like these can, I still kind of consider that a sleeping space. Now, uh, there were some folks in here actually as I was just taking my pictures. This RV has been off the truck for a whopping five minutes. 
And actually, in a few seconds, um, because I don't always record these video segments in order, you'll see the delivery truck still hooked up to this fifth wheel when I had this, uh, the awning open. But folks walked in and said, um, do you got one that, you know, doesn't have this fireplace? We don't need a fireplace. And I said, I can totally understand that. Uh, are you aware that it's actually an electric space heater? And they kind of paused. They went, well, no. But, you know, we don't really need that in July. And I said, I totally understand that. Did you know that it's also remote controlled and you can turn it on just for visual aesthetics? And then in the spring and the fall when you're camping, well, you could turn it on for a little extra heat that doesn't eat up your propane. And they went, huh, I didn't, I didn't know all that. So just be, you know, we call it a fireplace. And there's a reason I always throw up those quotation marks because it, it really has a couple different uses and benefits. And not everyone really understands how that might work. Now, one thing I didn't mention in the kitchen, and it's kind of occurring to me as I look over here, this is not just like a, a cheap countertop material. They went uh, pretty deep into a very nice sealed edge thermal foil counter. And you can see right here how this is the full counter material. This is a, a waterproof type material where if I'm splashing water around the sink or the grandkids spill a drink, no sweat. Wipe it up. Not a problem. There's not a T-molding for potential water exposure to swell into. Now, T-molded countertop, guys, you have to really allow that water to sit there and soak into it. But let's say, hypothetically, grandkid or you or just somebody had a, a brain fade moment and they left that window open and it rains overnight and you don't have the awning out to shield you. Well, rain would come in through the window and that's when this countertop is going to help keep it protected. That's one of the nice things. Now, there is the dual uh, sink covers. Plus, you have the recessed stove, so this thing just has a monster load of prep space. And there are outlets up there, there's outlets over there, there's outlets where you can get to them. A lot of RVs, uh, and for very good reasons, will mount their power outlets under the overhead cabinets. Because trying to install a power outlet in the side of a laminated wall is often very difficult. Now, they were able to accomplish that here, mostly due to the fact that Cougars have full 2-inch sidewalls, not inch and a half uh like common ultralight walls. But what's interesting is because Cougar doesn't go overboard on nonsense stuff, they still have the weight of the lighter built walls with the strength of the thicker walls. But the benefit here again is that power cords on appliances continue to get shorter. So you've got outlets down here where you can reach them all over the kitchen countertop space. Now one of the other neat things about this is the in-command system. We're gonna learn about in a minute. But your main cabin lights, you can actually activate from back here in the kitchen or from the master control panel by the front door. And uh, that you can also activate them from your phone when you sync into it. So there's a lot of different benefits there. And we'll talk a little bit more about in-command as we go. I've kind of jumped around this thing and done a few circles, but I think you get the idea. Now, another thing I like, you want that nice summertime breeze, spring breeze, whatever. Leave the screen door open and you've even got not just slide out side windows, but a sofa side window right here. You can really get some fresh air just trucking through this sucker right here. Um, now let's talk in command real quick. I like that raw iron handle coming up. Oh, by the way, motion sense lighting as we come up the stairs. You know, I'm not magical or anything like that, Harry Potter. But the, if you're going to walk in the entry door or walk up or down the stairs at night, It'll kick on exactly when you need it, where you need it, and it won't be like if you're away from the camper and you want a light on when you come back. It, if you just left a light on all the time, the window would glow and bugs would gather by the door. Well, you're not going to have that problem here because it will only turn on when you come home. But you can hard turn it on or hard turn it off if you want to bypass the motion sensor. In command right here. This is neat. This can sync to any Android or iPhone. Um, it's passcode protected. You can do some basic things without the passcode. Like you can monitor your tanks. You can just quick turn on and off lights. You can uh, monitor your battery and your water heater and stuff like that. But if you, you put the code in here, anything that this pad can do, you can do off your phone. And what's neat about that is this one right here, the uh, HVAC, the heating and cooling, you can control the air conditioner and the heater right off of this pad or your phone, because anything this pad can do, you can do on your phone too. So if you're laying in bed at night, or you're sitting down here, and in the you were sitting down and in the morning it wasn't too hot, but as the sun came out, it warmed up in that slide out, not a problem. You don't have to get up and interrupt anything. Grab your phone, turn on the air conditioner, a little bit higher maybe, and you're good to go. You got the central air running through the whole coach, you're going to be fine. By the way, Cougar fifth wheels, 
Always. Your main air conditioner is always a 15,000 BTU centrally ducted air. There's no like upgrade to a bigger air. They just have it. Now, just like Big Brother Montana, they have the uh, melts in your mouth, not in your hand door here. I don't know what the technical term is for it, but this door, you notice how I didn't have to walk backwards down the stairs because it just sort of melts out of the way. That's what this one's going to do for you. Now, over here in the bathroom, just like in the kitchen, we've got those thermal foil countertops so that we don't have uh, water penetration exposure problems and a very large, generous medicine cabinet. Um, Keystone's Cougar and Montana families have largely standardized this bathroom because they have found that it is just very popular amongst an extremely large number of people. Now, a lot of people, when I had the door to the left a second ago, they say, well, I don't want to have to walk in through there. I feel like that's a tight pinch. When you're at your destination, you don't have to. That's just the travel lock. But I did want to point out that we do have a nice little corner seat here. So if you do need to sit to bathe for safety or comfort or, you know, shave legs, whatever, it's easy here. Now, you might notice, too, this is a simple walk-in shower, no step-up. There is no, like, elevation to that shower pan. It's flush with the main floor because they've recessed the uh, plumbing. So more than enough headroom. The shower headroom is the same as the main bathroom headroom in here. And if there's room for my big head, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. Um, linen cabinet over here in the corner is something I don't want to miss. Let me pop that open real quick for you. Nothing to see except negative space in a sense, but it's what you're going to do with it that matters. You've got all kinds of room for towels and toiletries and all kinds of stuff in here. Um, let me back up a second. I'll stand in the shower. You've got that uh, foot flush stool there, so you've got uh, uh, plenty of leg room as well, and that is a nicer porcelain stool. And I like how they actually have that sink. They went with an oversized sink, but it sort of has that negative cutaway right there so that you do have extra, extra leg room in this thing. Now, before we leave, one thing I do want to point out is the thicknesses of all these doorways. That's one of the nice things, not just on Cougars, but Keystones in general. They have extra thick interior wall structures and all of their doorways are fully studded out. So that this door always maintains square right here. And you can just, I mean, it, I, I can't hurt the thing. All I've got to do is hurt my hand, which I kind of did, but <laughs> you get the idea. Now, one of the things that has plagued this industry for so many years, when you're in the bedroom of a smaller class fifth wheel, meaning a fifth wheel that has a closet slide and not a full bedroom slide, there was the dreaded step up around the bed. But if we take a look, that big scary nine inch step up is gone, guys. Cougars redesigned the pass-through storage and their bedrooms on these things, they now have a larger pass-through storage than anybody else in this class with the smallest virtually gone step up right here. It's like two and a half, maybe three inches. Is it technically still a bump? Sure. But is it that big giant nine inch going to trip you up and make you knock your head against the, the, the cabinets on your way to bed? No, no, that's that stuff's gone. We have a 60 by 80 residential bed right here. Uh, residential sized, uh, like normal queen sheets will fit that, and it does easy lift for storage below. Remember, uh, all Cougar fifth wheels uh, are going to be 50 amp service. They are all second air ready. So if you do want to sacrifice that bedroom vent up there, there is the uh, electrical wiring present to add a second air conditioner. Um, the uh, not, uh, Some brands that have the big closet slide outs, they will actually kill those um, side and corner cabinets. Cougar left those in there for maximum storage potential, as well as full storage below their side stands, which is nice, which you can see are wide open with head, uh, headboard mounted outlets, just like the kitchen. One of the things Cougar does very well and they're very cognizant of is uh, outlet location. So whether you're a CPAP user or something like that, you're going to be good to go. Now, uh, over here, a quick look inside one of those overhead cabinets, as well as that uh, slide-out uh, wardrobe closet with all kinds of storage below and uh, additional dresser drawers built right into the slide-out. So, uh, I mean, you can really pack this thing up heavy like crazy. Across from the bed, we've got our TV hookup, so you're able to put a uh, TV on the wall if you're so inclined. Although, I bet you could easily tap into like a roof stud up here and do a swing down roof mounted TV. And that's probably how I would go personally. Now, one other thing, you can activate your bedroom lights just like uh, the kitchen light switch. You can uh, use those either with a light switch or in command. But, uh, you know, you have an easy bedroom rocker light switch here as opposed to having go through and click, 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 click individual lights on and off because that's just that's not the recreational part of recreational vehicles now one of the questions we get anytime there's a slide under an awning like this is how much space is left so rather than show you 
Hello, young lady. No, you're fine, you're fine. This is young lady that helped bring us the camper today. We're still on the truck, obviously. We jump right on our footage here. Um, you can see for yourself, here's the room we have, or don't have, kind of depending on your perspective and how you want to look at it. I'll let you guys judge if it's enough or not. I simply want to take the time and the effort to show you what's actually here. If you kind of like this concept, a, a rear living room sort of concept with the uh, outside kitchen and a rear kitchen, but you don't want the big slide here, what you might consider looking at is called a 30.5 MLOK Eagle HT by Jayco here at Halet RV. But there are some advantages to this. Remember the living space that we're getting. You know, you're, you're, it's a push-pull, guys. You might be sacrificing some awning space to gain that living space. So you have to leverage the one against the other to decide which is more important. It's not that it's a flaw or a defect. It's an intentional design to give you more living space in less length. But that comes at the expense of awning space, obviously. Now, there's some benefits to this, too. People spend a lot of money on slide awning toppers to keep them protected from the, you know, sun and weather and all that when they're camping. Well, in a way, we kind of have a built-in slide awning over this big, deep uh, entertainment and outside kitchen slide out here. The other thing it's doing is it's helped shading this slide to keep the slide from generating less heat. And that's one of those things a lot of people actually don't realize or consider sometimes is that uh, all that heat gets trapped in those cabinets and it'll slowly bleed itself into your RV. So this is kind of preventing some of that from building up and happening. It's gonna work for some folks, it'll not work for others. We just put the information together to let you make a decision. So let's close the uh, awning up and see what else she brings to the table. And one of the first things that always strikes me on these uh, Cougar fifth wheels here is just the look and how the smaller segment of the Cougar fifth wheels visibly looks virtually identical to the big segment. You, there's not like an obvious, oh, that one's the big fancy snazzy one and this one's the, 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 the smaller one. Because really the consistency is there between big and small. The only thing that really changes, largely speaking, is just the, the floor plan layout and the options that are available between them. Now this is what I was saying where they redesigned their front pass-through to have a largest in-class pass-through, which is so much better than what they were doing. And at the same time, they also reduced that little hump in the bedroom. It was a win-win a, a situation. Usually, if you get more one, you have to give up more of the other. And in this case, they found a way to just make it do it better. Now, before we get in here, I want to point out how we've got these slam latches and double magnet catches to make this just simple and easy. It gets up out of the way so you're not ducking. More of that motion-sensitive lighting right above those outside TV hookups. And this is the brain of the in-command system, for those who are not quite familiar with this yet. Um, this is something that we're, we are familiar with at Halet RV from like the Keystone Fusion fifth wheel toy haulers and the Montana Legacy fifth wheels. Um, but never before has something like this been available in this class and segment and standard. This is found on all Cougar fifth wheels and trailers. Basically, guys, it does a couple things for us. It gives us easier access to all the wiring in here. It's, uh, generally speaking, I think it's a better system because anything that we've had within command has not had wiring problems. And God forbid it did, it would be easier to get to, especially considering Keystone was the first towable manufacturer to color code all of their wiring. And actually, if you look at this, they very clearly state out exactly what color everything is and what everything needs to be. Now, these big black box jobs right here. If you're not familiar with those, uh, basically you can go to like an automotive parts store and you can get those replaced um, as compared to like those little uh, blade fuses effectively. So it's doing more things for us. Now to operate our awning, our jacks, uh, the uh, a lot of different things like um, your uh, slide outs. You can use the touch screen inside. You could use your phone. But what if God forbid, which we haven't had happen yet, but what if God forbid something did happen? What do you do? Well, you can still walk out here. You can still select which motor you want to operate, and then you can open and close it right here. So there's still a manual switch override on top of a manual no power override on each slide or awning themselves. So there's like three or four ways to get out of Dodge with this thing. Um, the uh, nicer thick aluminum plank steps, they're very not slippery on a rainy day or in the morning when your shoes are wet because of all the condensation. The door is anti-slam. 
So even on a gusty day or if you just accidentally bump or fling the door open, it's not going to smash into anything. Um, I'd be remiss in my duties if I didn't mention how Keystone has the industry's single most comprehensive three-year structural warranty out there covering more things, including things like the paint on the nose cap, because Keystone in-house paints their own nose caps. They don't have to outsource that. That allows them to control the quality and the cost of it. And uh, they actually, where they, what they did is they actually bought the Newmar Diesel Pusher paint shop a few years ago and just took it over as their own. So it was a very modern, advanced facility that they use basically for nothing but painting nose caps. So it's very simple, easy work for them. Um, the docking center over here is enclosed and protected. The underbelly is enclosed and forced air heated to give you that extra little bit of protection. I like that our tank poles are in here where they're kind of protected out, uh, you know, away from the weather. Simple side mount solar prep plug right there. And I do like that battery disconnect so that you don't get phantom load um, from like your water heater, your TV, or all of your stuff. They don't really turn off. They go into standby. They go into low power mode. Well, that battery disconnect can just hard shut everything off so that you're not trickle draining your batteries um, when you're not using the RV. You know, it doesn't take long actually to kill that. So a question I get all the time, and frankly, I'm not aware of a single fifth wheel that isn't a walkable roof, but people ask, is it a walkable roof? And the answer is, of course. The thing a lot of people don't ask though is, can you walk on the slide boxes? And the answer in a Cougar is yes. I don't know that that's true on every fifth wheel. That's something I don't know that a lot of people think about or even consider. I don't know that you really need to walk on them, but God forbid you had to for some kind of care, maintenance, upkeep, or whatever. You can actually get on top of it because the roof of a Cougar slide is built just like the rest of the Cougar roof, effectively, which is pretty cool. 225 pound rated cargo bike rack on the back here. And I can't tell you the number of brands I see because it seems like those three year structural warranties Everybody and their brother seems to have them all of a sudden. You know, it kind of came out of nowhere and it came on pretty strong and fast. And it's not a three-year RV warranty. That There's a one-year RV warranty, which this has, or a two-year RV warranty, which pretty much only Jayco has. And then there's three-year structural uh, coverage on, on a lot of items like this on this Keystone. Uh, not every brand goes quite as in-depth as the Keystones do again. But it, it, it kills me how many of these brands say three-year structural warranty and then if you want to do something as simple as add a bike rack to the back of it, you're going to avoid that fancy pants three-year structure warranty. These are not built for failure. These are not built hoping you screw up. Cougars and Keystones in general are built hoping you go out and have a good time and don't have issues. That's what they're made for. That's why this has been a multi-consecutive time winner of uh, third-party quality uh, inspection awards. So not just LED tail lights, but also LED marker lights. And I want to point that out because if you glance at that, it sure doesn't look like it's an LED housing. But if you look inside, you can clearly see it is. Now, they didn't just put the fancy latches and catches on the big pass-through door. Anywhere you see an outside compartment on a Cougar, you're going to get the nicer slam latches and the, uh, the nicer magnet catches. So remember how I said inside, under the countertop, there was a chunk of space that you couldn't get to from inside? That's because you'd have to climb into that cabinet to get to it. No one's going to want to do that. So they opened it up out here where you can put your patio stuff. Um, now, right next to that, handy little outside shower utility cleanup station, which is always useful. Um, now, this has the uh, automatic leveling system built onto it. That is not standard in this uh, in the uh, Cougar Half Ton series. Normally, what you would typically see is power front uh, um, leveling jacks with power rear stabilizers. This specific RV in this video is not uh, the, the typical one you'd find here at Halid RV. So keep that in mind that the one in stock could be different. This specific RV is one where another dealer bought it and then at the last minute they backed up and said, well, we don't want it anymore. You guys have to deal with it. Well, we are a very large volume Cougar dealer and they called us and we're right in their backyard. They said, hey, can you get this out of our yard real quick? And we said, absolutely. Now the, the auto leveling system costs a little bit more but it gives you that one touch convenience. You never have to manually crank jacks, even with the power rear stabilizers, but it gives you one touch convenience and it does actually give you a little bit more stability on your campsite. So the camper is less inclined to do stuff like this. We don't really seem to have that problem in Cougars, but yeah, just uh, as info. Little detail stuff on their slides too really impressed me on the Cougars. I talked about the walk-on slide boxes, but the fact that you are always triple sealed on their slide outs, like you can see a second seal there, plus the interior bulb compression 
can seal. There's always three points of contact on these slides when they're all the way in or out. Now, past that interior wiper seal is also like a rain channel, so God forbid, somehow water does manage to work its way in there because it's like monsoon season. It will actually shunt that water down and away from the slide so it doesn't get into the camper or the wall. And then kind of the same thing. Uh, water is going to wash down the side of a slide out in the rain. And normally when it hits this trim, it would just start wicking underneath here. And most RVs have some kind of protection underneath the bottom. And in point of fact, this does as well. But an extra layer of protection they've done here is that if you take your fingernail and feel under here, it's not rounded like the top and it's not even flat. It actually has an inverted channel on it because water can't go up without assistance. So this will cause the vast majority of any water coming down the sidewall of the slide out to bead and drop and not even have to get to the protection under the floor here. That's what's cool about these guys. And then stuff like this, the detail work impresses me. And this is stuff I forget to talk about a lot. So shame on me, but you notice how this slide seal here is actually uh, two-tone. Seems like a silly thing to focus on, but when this slide out is closed, and this RV's in storage. That black seal gets a little bit of sun exposure and it leaves an ugly black foam petroleum line down the side of your camper. That will not. So it won't have the sun degradation and exposure that a black seal could. I love this, uh, how they lowered the big refrigerator here, and they're using the bigger fridge in this outside kitchen station. Um, the, uh, you've got power outlets over here. There's several different lights, so this thing can really light up if you're looking for it. And um, Cougar was actually the one that brought the Capital Grills to market initially. They helped that company get authorized, and you see them all over the nicer fifth wheels like our Cougars and our Eagles here at Halet RV. So if you don't need to cook, it's just a nice stainless steel prep top. When you are ready to cook, it's a real grill. It's not a two burner stove that can uh, you know blow out much more easily and frankly if you don't need that push it away the other thing is this is neat this is a galvanized rolled steel so while it's out here it is a little bit easier for let's say it's kind of a drizzly day if the rain's kind of coming in sideways a little bit to get to this because it's gonna you're gonna rain's gonna have a hard time getting back here but this is out so they use a nicer protected um, uh, housing around that grill right there um, quick glance at this, make sure I didn't miss anything major. I'm sure I did. By the way, there is also a gas grill quick connect right here for you. So if you do want to bring along a separate grill, you are all set to do that. There's in undoubtedly, there's plenty of things I haven't hit on yet, but hopefully you've got the general gist of it here. Um, if you have more questions, I'm sure you do. Give us a call. Uh, we didn't become the largest uh, independent RV dealer in the state of Michigan, selling literally coast to coast by not assisting people, ladies and gentlemen. And we are in a small town. We don't sell that many campers just to the local folk. We are a long distance dealership. I don't care where you live, this is what we do every day. So at the very least, if you find our video here useful, if you like this floor plan, all we ask for is a fair call, email, and opportunity to earn your business. And if you don't buy from us, that's our fault. All we ask for is just that fair shake. If that sounds all right to you, give us a ring. Uh, short of that, we only do everything here at Halet RV except for hidden dealer fees. Those we don't do. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.